my New Year's resolution to get these players out of this dungeon. It's really playing games, The Extinction Curse. I'm the GM Graham, and joining me today, uh, we do not have a Ross, unfortunately, as there are just loads of folks swashbuckler, but we do have Brian as Faith, the Tiefling Monk. Hello. Garrett as Favy and the Catfolk Rogue. Hey. Uh, other Ross as Marion, the Half Elf Oracle. Hello. And Patrick as Horatio, the Half Elf Wizard. Go dogs. Go dogs. Hell yeah. <laughs> Number one, baby. Uh, whatever. They trashed Athens, so who cares about them? Uh, so, we are still in Lower Moonstone Hall. After much uh, toil and suffering for the characters, has been but a scant three days or so uh, that you've been down here. Spending a couple nights now at this point, going through, sleeping in a broom closet, uh, going through all kinds of terrible dangers there have been. Uh, so many Zolgaths, so, so many Zolgaths, and their dinosaur companions, and their demon companions, and their dine and I already said dinosaurs, uh, redcaps, there have been, uh, faceless stalkers, uh, and then most recently, after talking to Ulthadar, getting this giant vision, this prophetic view of the mountaintop and the different resonant reflections of Eridan that you must go and capture from these different towers and you now have glorious divine purpose to go off for. But wait a second. We haven't figured out what's all in this dungeon. We have, There are still closed doors, my friend. So go back to your ghostly grave. We have more things to explore. Uh, the first place you end up exploring kind of across the dungeon from where you are currently was this ancient sealed chamber with these circular stones and instead of like this spiral pattern on the floor and this clay golem, this tough guardian that was uh, carrying with it this uh, chalice, this grail. Well, you decided we're going to take that grail. The golem did not like that very much. And decided to give chase to you all after you realized it was very tough and hit very hard. Uh, you managed to evade its grasp and hide in this secret broom closet. Uh, in the meantime, while you tried to sleep throughout the night, this thing went on a rampage, basically destroying this level of the dungeon. Uh, you came back out. It saw you. You lured it over to the chamber, this wide cavern where the Zolgaths made their entrance into Moonstone Hall. And Oarshisk with some clever... Scaling upon the walls, trying to hold it out like bait, cause the golem to go up, but it is a clay, like a clay pot. If it goes up in the air, it's pretty brittle, it will shatter, and so it did so, and from a range, you were able to finish it off. Um, Awarsha still feels this kind of malevolent magic uh, upon him. Marion and Favian are still exhausted from many efforts before of trying to... Or I forget exactly what the, uh, <laughs> what the fatigue is for this point, but basically you... Tried a lot, and you were tired. Uh, and you do have the Grail in your possession. You're unsure what it does. You've got kind of, you know, some properties. Not properties of it, but basically what it looks like. Um, but no, no obvious signals as to what it might do. You've then found this other chamber that you've... Kind of the last and final chamber that you haven't really delved into very much at this point. You see this circular chamber, and that will read its description once more for you all. <clears throat> Twelve statues ring the perimeter of this round, cavernous chamber. The exquisitely detailed stonework depicts humans facing inward toward the room's center, each wearing a mask of cloth, leather, or stranger materials. Low stone steps lead to a circular dais at the center of the room, where an inscription has been carved deeply into the gray de stone. Double doors exit to the north and east. So, as you're uh, down here, trying to see what to do about it, uh, you look and you see these 12 statues. Uh, peering at them, there's a few things you make out obviously about them. Um, one, they each seem to be a very obvious, different profession about them. Uh, so, kind of going from this one o'clock position uh, around clockwise, artisan, artist, beggar, farmer, fisher, hunter, merchant, scholar, shepherd, soldier, tailor, and thief. Uh, and then there's an inscription um, that you, uh, I don't think any of you speak the language the inscription is in, um, but uh, beyond that, 
you can see that the tailor and the merchant are full asterisk there. That is because uh, of these 12 statues, 10 of them are wearing masks, and the masks are made of different materials, except for the tailor and for the merchant. They are maskless. Does it look like they might have once had a mask, or the statue is built in such a way that, that something could be affixed to it? Um, let me see, Fabian. You take a gander at that. Um, <laughs> best you can tell, my probably. Uh, yeah, you could probably... You, they could definitely have a mask put upon them. They're all humanoid in shape, and the rest of them seem to be sporting these masks just fine. Um, but... Yeah, probably. I wonder if uh, this is spoiled like the others. You know, I read a book once called Artisan, Tailor, Soldier, Thief. <laughs> Maybe that's the magical <laughs> solution. We are, read the book out loud. Are the masks uniform? No. Uh, the masks are all different. For example, you look at the artisan one. Uh, it's a muscular woman who swings a carpenter hammer. The statue wears a patchwork mask of balsa wood, iron, and leather. Look to the artist. A willowy man carrying the sculptor's tools and a painter's palette. His statue wears a mask woven of boar's bristles. So as you can see, each statue has a mask made of a different kind of material. They look a little bit different. I pull out my notes. I say, didn't we see something? This reminds me of... Right. A carpenter, a musician, and a scholar. In the mosaics. Up. up. Well, we don't have a musician. And we have an artisan. It's kind of like a carpenter. Right, the artist is, uh, I suspect, a visual artist. Yeah, he's, it seems to be a sculptor. Right. Um, so Horatio, taking out your notes and kind of thumbing through them, since you have been amongst Eridan at the Temple of Eridan and kind of getting into a lot more of what this church might have been and seeing a lot of different iconography and symbols to it, um, you kind of got the sense, and you've had some of these books too that you've looked at, uh, that Aridin sometimes walked the world disguised as a practitioner of common profession. Mm. Uh, so that, you know, this kind of sense of the ordinary being holy, right? The, these average folks and doing your profession and doing it well was considered a virtue to the Aridinites. So these are kind of like 12 aspects of Aridin, these different common professions uh, that are kind of central to this faith. Why is the god of humans? Because they're boring. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, it's the mundane. Oh boy. Okay, that's kind of neat. Yeah. Um, does anything ping as magic? With detect magic? I think I detected yes. magic here before. We mentioned it at the end of last session, but yes, there is a strong magical aura in different uh, kinds of magic from these statues. Um, kind of overlapping each other a little bit, their, their, their energies, but it seems that, you know, there's definitely magic all about in here. Uh, we're level 7, right? Uh, yes. And 4th we, that means that we have access to fourth level spells, so mm -hmm. well we can pinpoint the source of the highest level magic as like an imprecise sense. Oh, hmm. What if there are multiple sources that are highest level? <laughs> Let's see. Is it's the upgraded version of Tech Magic? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Read it real quick. Okay. Um, oh, I didn't. I haven't put the fourth level version in. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we've, we've got the heightened fourth one there. Okay. So, what you'd probably oh, get. 
Um, hmm. Yeah, you could feel some of the statues give off a bit more of an energy, but it's ever slightly so. Uh, and it's you, you can kind of sense it and detect it for a while and, and pinpoint that it seems to be coming from the masks more so than the statues themselves. Uh, and you see the masks, the ones on the artisan, on the artist, on the beggar, uh, the fisher, the hunter, the merchant. You kind of scan. You said the, the merchant statue. was missing their mask. You scan, and the merchant does not ping out magic. Um, and then there's kind of this pervading sense of magic throughout here. Like there's something lingering beneath the surface that's just waiting to be tapped. Seems like we should remove tailor the mask. ping as magical? Uh, the tailor does not either. So it seems like the masks do possess some magic, some of them varying degrees I, of power. I, I think we need to find the other two masks and put them on, and then that'll unlock Or that, yeah, off. one of the two. Or we take off a mask, move a mask. To or we the... put the mask on ourselves? Yes. <laughs> That is definitely not a, good, not a good idea. Taking the masks off, that seems like a, <laughs> a, a wrong thing to do. Um, except that in character, that seems like maybe what we wanted to do. <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe we want to identify it first. Identify the magic of one or that two of the masks. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I'll, I'll walk over to the scholar and see if I can identify the magic with Oh boy. Probably going to be religion, isn't it? Because this is the temple. That's I'm going to try with Arcana anyway. I will uh, go after the soldier with religion. Okay. So Horatio. Hmm. So that was Horatio on the Scholar. And then Marion is doing Religion on the Soldier. Okay. Um. Hmm. is there's nothing innate about the mask that tells you exactly what's going on there um but trying i guess with the detect magic and trying to read a bit of what this magic might do you know if if the read aura cast spell was cast and trying to figure out what's going on with these masks um, in addition to your check horatio the scholar a statue depicting a wizened woman hauling a stack of books in both arms, a quill tucked beneath, behind her ear. Uh, the statue wears a mask constructed of stiff parchment. And kind of feeling with the parchment is kind of this... You're very familiar with abjuration magic and, you know, sort of the negating of different things. Uh, you feel like the mask imbues a dispelling spell to it. Like the ability to dispel magic. Marion, the one you look at the soldier, the soldier is a stocky woman standing at attention, crossbow strapped to her back and longsword and daggers at her belt. Uh, the mask is constructed of pieces of broken blades, so it's kind of wicked awesome looking. Uh, but you get the sense of protecting from these blades, that they're meant to be used in defense rather than in attacking. Uh, and you feel like this mask may uh, imbue, imbue the magical ability to shield other with it. Interesting. So, um, it seems like the masks correspond to the, uh, the occupation. Are there any that seem mismatched? 
Um, not particularly on the ones that do still have masks. Um, the beggar wears a mask of burlap cloth. The farmer wears a mask of woven dried grain stalks. The fisher has a mask of silvery netting. Uh, the hunter has a mask of brown leather adorned with autumn leaves. Uh, merchant's mask is missing. Scholar, when we already said, the shepherd has a mask of spun wool. Uh, we got the soldier, the tailor's mask is missing, and then the thief has a statue of, uh, with a mask of black satin. I would like to take off the scholar's mask and put it on. All right. Horatio, you go up to the statue, and you carefully lift the statue's mask off and put it on. When you do so, Horatio, you see the scholar, this kind of wizardly looking woman in the statue, peer toward you, and then the book that she has underneath her hand opens up and she draws forth from it this dark energy which she sends in your direction. The rest of you see nothing of the sort. Horatio simply goes and dons the mask. Horatio, I need you to make a will save for me. I have a thing. Did I did I do that thing today? I did it yesterday. I think I did, but I need to check my spells. Yeah, I did. Shit. I, I have a reaction, but I think it happens before the save, if I cast that spell today. Let's see. I... Get two fourth level spells. It's a third. Nah, I didn't cast it today. Okay, will save. Mm-hmm. I cast it yesterday and had to make no will saves. <laughs> 30. Okay. Uh, so, you will just be taking... Uh, 18 points of mental damage. Okay. And you are frightened one by this sudden display. Uh, and it's a little intense, a little scary. You all see Horatio stagger backward, but I would like everyone to now roll Perception for initiative. I'll say Horatio is just sitting guard outside the room so it does not see what's going on at the moment. This is fun. <laughs> I can't tell if this is a... Like, is this a... Complex hazard or just something weird? I don't know. But I couldn't help it. <laughs> Abjuration Scholar? Hi, it's me. Okay. <laughs> but uh, he doesn't like me. Fabian. Apparently. Uh, you see that suddenly Horatio is staggering back and kind of like shook a little bit from the from taking the mask off the statue. What do you do? Uh, I'll go over and approach him and try and you know, are you? Did you see something there, buddy? <laughs> try and uh, comfort him. She's the. Uh, <laughs> she has magic. <laughs> Who? The the scholar. <laughs> Point at the statue. Um, Fabian, as you begin to look toward the statue, you kind of see some of the other statues shift a little bit. Like the merchant seems to be moving, but it's it's. But you're both seeing the statue as it is, 
uh, as a solid, unmoving thing, and then kind of overlaid over it this spectral image of the merchant, um, I think with uh, the scale beginning to whip the scale around kind of in your direction. <laughs> okay. Um, can I uh, hold an attack action if something tries to attack me? Uh, <laughs> sure. Use your last two actions to ready an attack against the statue. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what's going. Well, I think in character, I don't know what's happening yet, uh, sure. nor if it is manifesting in a way that I can interact with. Um, so if something makes a hostile action in range, I'll. I'll poke it. <laughs> okay. Faith. Um, uh, I see that Horatio is frightened, mm -hmm. right? Like yep. he's visibly shaken. Yes. So I'm going to administer first aid to reduce his frightened condition by two. Whoa. If I succeed, and it says the DC is the DC of the effect that caused the condition. So. Okay. Roll pretty high. 29, that's pretty high. Uh, that is high enough, too. Okay. Um, so when you use, instead of stabilizing creatures templating. Yeah, so I'm doing the one action, administer first aid. I can, instead, I can reduce their fright nursing condition by two or remove them entirely. It, which, I guess, okay. in this. So it doesn't have the normal system. healing effect, just has the remove condition. Right. Okay. Well, the normal healing effect would be to destabilize them or stop them from bleeding. Oh, oh gotcha. It. This is not treat wounds. This is, this is not treat wounds. Ah, gotcha. Uh, yeah, so you go over and with a bit of your, you know, healing punches, punch the punch the fear out of Horatio <laughs> uh, and do successfully. Stop being, stop being scared. Snap out of it. Uh, now, now I, can, I can also heal him because I can use battle medicine. That's true. Give another action. I will, I will, in fact, use battle medicine on him. I'll do... I'm going to do DC 20. Alright. Success. I succeed. I only get regular success. You only gain 20 hit points. Yep, so there's those Which hit points back. Which is only down 14, so... And that's my three actions. Alright. That's all I needed. Marion, what do you do? I'm going to move to here. I'm going to take the mask from uh, Horatio and put it back on the statue. Okay. Uh, you go ahead and put the mask, Horatio. I guess, Horatio, are you resisting your brother at this point? No. <laughs> All right. I don't, I don't think that's the fine. So, Marion, I'll say you move as an action. You take the mask off as another action. Uh... It would probably be a third action to, like, put it back on the statue. I agree. Okay. Um, kind of situate it right. Uh, so, Horatio, you see that the uh, statue you took it off of, the scholar, that spectral kind of image floating off of it, ceases and kind of fades back into the statue. Um, the rest of you gathered around look and see that the merchant statue, to all of you at this point has this image kind of shaking off of it uh, and you turn to the Taylor statue and it does as well so what you see is these two statues without the masks continue to have these agitated kind of spectral forms around toward them uh, the merchant one is indeed going to go after you Fabian you see this it's swinging these scales toward you uh, so I think your reaction will be after it attacks you, you get to attack back. Um, but Fabian, I will need you to make a will save. And then... Uh, let's see. Let's go. Let's just roll and see who that does. Uh, Marion, the Taylor statue uh, behind you, um, has this needle and thread and takes it and just whips the needle in your direction. Spectrally, of course, you'll also need to make a will save. Uh, Fabian, that is a failure. So. It's not a critical failure. No. Fabian, you just take 32 mental damage. 
Uh, and then you <laughs> are frightened too. And I make a, a will save too? Yes, you do, Marianne. The, the tailor is going after you. Oh, wow. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Are you going to hero point that one, or are you just going to take it? <laughs> uh, I'll hero point it. Sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, a, a, I guess a, yeah, a 30 wasn't a critical wow, success. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, so that is just a regular failure for Marion. Um, so, Marion, you will take 33 mental damage and be frightened, too. Uh, so, Fabian, uh, you then get to kind of take your oh, reaction uh, to attack this thing. <laughs> Let's see if, if I can. I'm uh, I'm in no good way uh, in the best of times. Well, okay. Uh, you go, and the rapier goes and hits the statue, and just kind of slides off the statue. It is still a solid stone thing, apparently. <laughs> slides off. Uh, but then we're on to oh, Horatio. You see Mary and Fabian kind of take a brunt of this assault from these uh, statues and whatever they're doing. So there are can I like target these spectral forms or or... Certainly try. Um, I'm going to try to cast Magic Missile at the... Yes, the... Which one did Fabian just try and stab? Was it the, the merchant? merchant next to you? Yes, I'll go for the Merchant. There might be more than three magic missiles in this, but this is just a first level. So we can take the first three if there are. Um, that's the one. Yeah, it's just the first three. Okay. Force damage. the magic missile spell toward the merchant spectral image coming from it uh, and it doesn't really seem to phase it. You see the magic missile kind of strikes against the statue um, but there's not a lot of impact and force to it. That's my turn. That's three actions. Oh, that was the three action version. Yep, that's ah. that's three actions. All right. <laughs> uh, so, Fabian, what do you do? Okay. Uh, how do we calm down these things, which we can't really seem to fight? Uh, do I? What do I got? What do I got? What do I got? <laughs> I'm going to suggest to my party members, maybe we need to cover the statue's vision somehow to calm it. Uh, do I have any? Not really. Well, considering all of my horrific states, I'm going to suggest maybe we escape this room until we know more about it. Bravely maybe locate these. Maybe, maybe locate these other masks. Discretion is um, the better part of valor. <laughs> I, I agree. 
It's worked for you so and far, running away from your problems. I, I will... Win yeah. <laughs> Turns I, out we I, can I'll, keep I'll, running I'll, away from our problems. Duck Light may have taken one of uh, them or something. Yeah, that, that, this will be my turn. I don't know who would have taken turn. the other one. The but... Okay, Fabian, uh, you run away. Alright. Faith? Uh, well, I'm going to start by healing Marion because he's missing a lot of hit points. Uh, I will do DC 20 Battle Medicine. Uh, critical success, he gains 33 hit points. Nice. Hey. And that's one action. And then I'll try to treat his frightened condition. That also succeeds. You're no longer frightened too. So it reduces it by two, so that yeah. go down to zero. And um, we're we're leaving, right, guys? It's, that's what the the cat the cat man said. Ah, uh, fine. <laughs> well, I mean, do whatever you want, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hang out over here. <laughs> wow. uh, I saw what those things do. That didn't look that didn't look like fun. Yeah, Marion. Like, t t t tell them we'll 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 find their we'll find their mask later. <laughs> I'll follow. Okay. Uh, as the rest of your party leaves Horatio... Yeah, leave thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving me all alone with both uh, of them. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so, um... Does not affect the same creature more than once. So, just they, they're one nearest to you. Uh, the tailor seems to be following the other, in other allies out of the room. But once they exit the room, it can't... Doesn't seem to be able to follow them. Uh, the merchant one, however, will slam the scales down in your direction, so another will save from you, Horatio. Twenty-one. Not a bit quite enough. Uh, so you will take 37 points of mental damage and be frightened too. It's the horrible spectral thing coming from this merchant statue really just does a number on your psyche. Uh, Horatio. So... They, so they both look like they're... don't want to attack me or something? Can I, like... Uh, yeah, the merchant one and the tailor one both kind of are turning to you with animosity in their spectral shifting forms. Um, it seems that once your allies left, vacated the room, they were not able to pursue or, or do anything to them once they left. You have recall knowledge to just have any idea of what the hell is going on. Um, sure. Um, what skill would you like to use? Um, let's try it. Kind of the better skill. Occultism seems like it might be more likely. I really just need to train religion. Um, I'll get that at N. Um, let's go with. Yeah, let's go with occultism. Okay. Um, so, what you do get, clearly um, there is something where the magic has been disturbed here, and this is a reaction to missing masks. Uh, that these, you know, two were imbued with some kind of magic by the Eridanites uh, and this is maybe some sort of a defense mechanism uh, where the masks are missing, they've not been returned, and so there's this lashing out of magical energy. Uh, you do get uh, that the spell that they seem to be affecting you with is Phantasmal Killer. Oh, that's uh, bad. Yes. So you kind of see it happen a few times like, oh, uh, this is a, a phantasm of the aspects of Aradin coming out to kill you for taking away their masks. Uh, regardless of who actually did it, it seems that taking one mask from them has kind of set them off and agitated them since they're not a full set of masks at this point. Do I think I could dispel that? 
potentially, uh, you think so. It may be difficult to do so, but you think that with proper incantations and proper calming motions, uh, you may be able to calm the statues down. Probably religion. Probably religion. Um, it's just to, like blast off at its spell magic and see if that works. Sometimes that works for this kind of thing. Um. Oh well, it doesn't matter. My party has abandoned me. I'm going to follow them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I. I did not vote to leave, but I have been left. So. I'm, I mean, I'm, it's it's majority I'm rules. I'm than them, so I'm going to spend two actions running away. All right. <laughs> Horatio, you leave the room. Um, when you do so, uh, you all stay out of the room. Um, Oars just kind of looks across the room and it's like, I'll I'll meet you around the other side. This kind of knows the lay of the dungeon at this point. Uh, so, you all stay out of the room for a while. Uh, kind of peering in, eventually you feel the magical energy emanating from these statues die down after about a minute or so. It seems like you, you peek your head in and the statues seem to be just statues once more. You know, if leaving the room is all it takes, we could <laughs> just take it, them all. You want, you want to cheese it? Or just... Well, we haven't found a way to af to affect them. Magic didn't work, and rapiers didn't work. Right. That's but like that's like most of our masks even do. You two can reach your arms out and touch the room that they're in, and they did not chase us. If it's a if it's a magical effect, maybe I could dispel it. Maybe we could find the masks. I think we, we should check all of them. I think we try to find the masks. And they may be we, elsewhere somewhere. Do I have mage hand? I do have mage hand. What is market as a good quest for later? Magical items in this game. Yeah, Unintent, unattended object of bulk one or less from thirty feet. And for that matter, I could use reach spell and do it from how far? Like 60 feet? Yes. So I could take all of the masks from 60 feet away with my magic spell. <laughs> I say give it a shot. Can't hurt. Like, if it doesn't do anything, I can put them back. It'll just take yep. 12 rounds, basically. Yeah, maybe start with just one. Let me stand back here while you... You play. Mage. Go for it. Okay. Well. And and reach spell. To uh. There you go. The rest of you kind of take a few steps back. You leave the door to that chamber open, as uh, Horatio, you have control over your spectral hand. Um, so I would like to, you know what? The scholar was mean to me. I'm going to take hers first. <laughs> okay. You go and reach out with the magic, casting the hand, guiding it over to one side. Uh, you go. And take the mask off the scholar. The spectral hand lifts it up, over and off, has in its hand. You see the statue begin once more to kind of go and move about, but it seems to be searching around and can't quite get a lock on anything. But your spectral hand continues to maintain possession of the mask. Hey, I would like to bring the mask All right, you bring the mask back, floating it out, comes outside the threshold of the door, 
and remains in the mage hand. Hey, I'll drop it right on the ground. Sure, kind of just and <laughs> then it, it's it like a stack like some loose sheaf paper. Uh, kind of just went and went on the ground. <laughs> uh, what is the beggar's? Uh, the beggar has a mask of burlap cloth. Okay, I will take take the mask. Are you taking all of the masks? I, I want to take all of the masks. <laughs> one by one, the mage hand goes Six, into the like room. Takes like a minute. Takes out, goes in, takes out. Every time the ma- the statue animates with these spectral images going crazy and angry and pumping their fists in the air and just the shouting that's wordless and silent. Uh, until you have a little small pile of ten masks sitting outside the chamber. Congratulations, be- you have you have cheesed this puzzle successfully. <laughs> and because it is a hazard, you all get 120 experience points. I love wow. cheesing hazards, it's the best thing. Congratulations. 120? 100, it's a severe hazard. Wow, and that's that, level eight, guys. That that's a level. thousand. Yeah, there you go. We can go. <laughs> Spoils. Okay, now. we've done it. Uh, sure. You, I guess you take. I do kind of want to beat up that was elemental. It, was right? it just for like spite, or do you take the mask <laughs> with you? Oh, I want to take them with me. Yeah, yeah. Let's take them with us. Yeah. All right. Who knows? Sure. You have. Maybe we can masks. Incorporate them into the act. <laughs> Ooh, that's a great idea. Or well, it's just probably just face palms at this point. <laughs> I also want to uh, go and so... figure out how to kill that uh, thing. Can we statistically level up to eight? Um, yes. Essentially, at this point, you'll be able to level up to eight with minimal intrusions. Uh. But you do you are conveniently uh, back at the stairs that lead up uh, toward the upper level over here. So we can go or we can go and kill that thing that came out of the what was it a tapestry or a mirror in the uh, secret room? Well, half a secret passage. Yes, the statue that came out of the eye of Aridin in this little tapestry room. That's what it was. Yes, that's still, for, for what you know, still lingering in there. Does my frighten go away after some amount of time? Um, Probably two rounds if it's... Yeah, Frightened gets contested every round, so yeah, your Frightened would go away. Oh, I guess I can heal you guys up, too. Oh, no, we just leveled up. No, wait, this, this, that's, not, that's not how it works, right? You yeah, know, I'm back to pull the points when to level up. Uh, pretty much at this point, you get your level 8 stuff. Ooh! It's my level 8 stuff. Oh, I can punch you from far away now. Wow, range punches. Yeah. Nice. I don't remember what I get. Um, you'll get a... Probably spells. At level 8, everybody gets a class feat and a skill feat. Woo. I am picking up the debilitating dichotomy spell, which I hear from the internet is pretty good. Hmm. Debilitating <laughs> dichotomy. Di- I probably I don't think I'm I misspelled dichotomy. I can't, I can't spell either of those words. Oh, geez. I, okay, I almost got it. <laughs> debilitating dichotomy. Have I have we reached the point where wizards have um class feats worth taking. I will find out. <laughs> They're lower level ones. Not good. There we go. Dichotomy. 
Okay, yes. Uh, go ahead and make a relation spell. Two actions, 30 feet, one creature other than you. If you'll glimpse the possible conflicts between the divine anathema behind your curse, forcing you to reckon with another's conflicts as well. You and the target each take 9d6 mental damage with a basic will save. Target is stunned one if it critically fails. You get a degree of success one better than you rolled for your saving throw. Wow. Yeah. So if you succeed, you just take no damage and fails half. Yep. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. 9d6 mental damage. That's that's even worse than what the Phantasmal Killer was doing. So. Yeah, but you have to take damage too, so. Yeah. That's but true. you take less. Yeah, that's a good point. Ideally. Ideally. Uh, cool. So, uh, Mary makes a suggestion to investigate the statue in the eye, or you have the exit. Which do you choose? I like the I'm idea of dead yet. figuring out what, you know, stopping that thing from whatever rampaging it's going to do. Also, there might be yeah. stuff in that room. Yeah. This is effectively our temple. All the stuff here now belongs to us. This is our temple. It has been given to us. And so it would be a shame not to not to take it. Well, you're the closest to humans, so, so I'll follow your lead <laughs> in this place. <laughs> I'm part human, too. Yeah. Actually, 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 we have, actually, wait, like, no, I'm not. We have You're we have right. one human between us. <laughs> Actually, I'm I'm no part human. Come yeah, think of it. Make up a whole yeah, aren't you an elf? Yeah, I'm an elf tiefling. Sorry, I forgot about I for, I forgot what <laughs> this. Oh yeah, that's you right. forgot you forgot which half you share with the colders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, if you all wish to go to that room, I can fast travel you there, so you're not having to navigate here. Since you have thoroughly explored this place now, you roughly know where everything is. You know that... Whoosh! Oh, I need to transport you there. <laughs> We've learned the power of fast travel. Yep, fast travel. Oh, thank you. Alright, uh, so you go into this room. This is where all the alcoves are, where there are a bunch of different items kind of piled up all around, some of them familiar to the lists that you've recovered that are in Dusklight's handwriting. Um, with some of those items you uh, that may have been in this alcoves you've recovered. Uh, and then this room up here is the one with the tapestries. Um, vibrant tapestries adjoining the east and west walls, woven tapestries in uh, remarkably pristine condition. Um, except there's been some marks and some damage from when you came in here last time and had to retreat. Uh, there's fragrant smoke wafting through the room from ele elegant silver sconces built into the room's four corners. And then the large engraving of the winged eye stares from the north wall above a stone shelf piled high with half-melted candles. Um, so, uh, last time you came in here, this eye unfolded and this stone statue thing uh, came and tried to kill you. Okay. I will enter. All right. Marion enters. What do the rest of you do? I will step up to the door, which is open. All right. Yes. Wait, before we do this, hold on. Let's let's do this thing I've heard about, which is um Casting some of my defensive spells before we get into a fight. Um, do, you want, do you want me to also do, do, do that thing where I, I heal you guys up before we start the fight? Since Horatio seems sure. to be not a bunch of hit points. I would personally like that. Okay. Uh, I'll start with Horatio because you're close by. Ooh, oh no, that's a critical failure. Oh no. You're, you're no. not supposed to punch me in the head. Ow. <laughs> you can hero point uh, if you like. Nah, I'm not gonna hear a point. Three damage is not gonna put me. Is not gonna down me. So it, it would be another D8, but another D8 will also not down me. It's it's ten. Okay, I'll try that again. There we go. There we go. Hey, up. 
Let's see. I think you're up more than you were down, at least, because the 33 is still more so That is 17. plus 33. Yeah. I, I am better than I was. <laughs> still at about... Wait, hold on. That includes level 8 hit point. How many did I have at 7? <laughs> I'm down 14. Just going to pull up this turn over real quick. Any other spells you cast before heading into this room? Um, let me check my spells. I have at least one blur. Probably. Let's see. So I've got, um, I've got a freedom of movement if we think that would be helpful. I don't remember whether it grabbed us or not. I've got a haste. I've got two haste. Um, I've got a blur. Yeah, I've cast one of the haste. So I could cast, um, right before we run in, I could cast Haste on Faith, I think is probably the best person. And I could cast Blur on somebody. The downside of casting Blur on somebody is that if uh, Faith needs to treat wounds on them, she'll have to make the DC5 flat check um, and inevitably fail oh. because that's how dice work. <laughs> um I don't think anything else I have is going to be helpful ahead of time. Uh, I'll go ahead and cast Bless. With my prayer beads. Um, blur lasts for a minute. Haste lasts for a minute. So that should give us... I mean, that gives us ten rounds to, I guess, nine rounds on one of them. All right, so faith is hasted. Or you can always set up your. Uh, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna treat wounds on, uh, Fabian as well. No. Yes, please. You're also <laughs> wounded. Sorry. I'm not. Doing yeah, that. Oh, let's right. give. I, I I've been I've been bit busy leveling myself up. Let's give Fabian the. Let's give Fabian the blur. I think. So he tends to get. Points. Blur. Yeah. Speaking of healing people, uh, at the end of last session. I cast Vital Beacon on myself, or at some point. Uh, so you can spend an action to touch me, and it will heal you. Oh, ah. nice. Fancy. That. Awesome. All it right. starts off at a 4d10, and with each heal, it gets progressively weaker. Cool, cool. So Marion's glowing a little bit. All right, so walking into this chamber... Casting spells, magical energy radiating around you, you strut in, just as you see, like clockwork, this big stone eye unfurl with these arms, ready for round two, everybody roll initiative. Alrighty. So, top of the round, ready to go. All the magical energy around you. Horatio. Uh, I am going to start by casting... It's all, all the way out at this point. Yeah, most of my magic is not terribly helpful. Um, once we've sort of pre-buffed. So, I'm going to do... get a new focus point? I think I can get a new focus point. Um, I'm going to cast Protective Ward and then I'm going to sustain it twice. So it'll go to 15 feet. Alright. Your magic comes out. Protecting. We'll get all of us currently. Yep. Uh, so it goes to Oarshisk. Um, Oarshisk does recall that this thing had spikes. So, hmm. Hmm. 
I'll say. Oh, but he knew that he could get up on the wall to try and climb up there. So we'll say that Oarshus goes, climbs up on the wall, say having to take two actions to get kind of over to a striking position over here from the wall, and uh, then striking out with a claw. Um, regular claw. A 23. Uh, will miss, unfortunately. So Arshus clinks to one of the tapestries, clawing up there, swiping out at it, but missing the stone brute. Marion. I'm going to sustain the bless. Bless. That makes it five feet larger. Alrighty. And then I'm going to cast uh, spells and not that one. The biggest one. Or maybe not the biggest, biggest one. Big spell. Oh, I guess I don't have... I mean, I do, but anyway. I'm going to cast... A spiritual weapon... At uh, level 4. Alright. Your spectral arrow comes... Striking into it, a 34 to hit uh, will certainly do so for five whole points of damage. Uh, plus another 1d8, because I upcast it. Oh, nice. For some reason, it doesn't have that uh, in there, but anyway. Five plus... Three, eight. Eight points of damage. All right. Goes in, strikes against it, uh, and it is... Um, Damage. Thunk. And the spectral weapon remains. Uh, Alright, so that was Marion. On to Faith. I'm gonna move in front of Marion. Alright. So I'm blessed, Faith. right? Yes. Um, when you step around it, um, it is difficult terrain as when it contacts with the stone floor, it's this little stone shooting up pillars and whatnot. Uh, oh, yeah, I remember so, that. So, as you step into it, uh, some of those pillars t -t 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 shoot up from the ground and spike out at you. Uh, you take six points of piercing damage. Uh, okay, I am... Gonna try to punch it. I'm gonna spend a key point to do a key strike on my flurry of blows. Alrighty. Gonna be force damage for the additional damage. 28 will hit for 19 points of damage. Bow. Yep. And then the second part of that attack. And 18, 18 probably does not hit. Nope. Uh, damage is a lot better though. Yeah, the damage cracks out against it and some of the stone crumbles a little bit around your punch impact. Uh, was that a stunning strike? That was a stunning strike. Okay. Uh, fortitude save on its part. Uh, 32 to your fort save. That will save. Alright. Do another attack. Good, it's 15. Uh, I moved. I punched, I punched. I'm, I'm hasted. You are. So I'll keep punching. D just the number three, right? Get it never goes first and three. Yeah, still that multiple attack penalty. Uh, 23, that's between the two. Not quite enough, unfortunately. You I, I am blessed, if that matters. I didn't oh, add the so blessing to my... Plus one, it'd be 24? 24. Yeah. 24, yeah. Or, uh, 24 still will not enough to do it, okay. unfortunately. Uh, but you land one good first punch, but then it kind of sees you coming and brings up this big stone arm to block you for the rest of them. Uh, then it goes on to its turn. Uh, it didn't like that big punch. Um, so it's going to punch you back, Faith. <laughs> uh, Ow! It's a 32 to hit your AC. Uh, 32 hits. 
Okay. Uh, it is going to deal 26 points of bludgeoning damage to you. <laughs> um, plus, uh, you are pushed back 10 feet away from it. So we'll say you just hit the wall over here <laughs> as it pushes away. Um, and then over there. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do another punch. Uh, reaching out toward Marion and punches Marion. Uh, and with that, that'll be a 28 to hit you, Marion. That does hit. Alright, 23 points of bludgeoning damage, and you get slammed into Fabian. And then finally, it will do a punch against Arshisk. Does well technically. He's level eight now. I have not leveled up Oarshus, so his AC would be twenty-five as of level eight. So he just manages to swing to one direction and barely miss the stone. Is it punched into the wall? Uh, Fabian, on to you. Okay. Uh. Well, let's go forward and start smacking. Right, uh, you enter the stone right. there. Uh, it is difficult yep. terrain, and then also you take four points of piercing damage. This is the stone. Just accepting you from around it. I can. Do. And then strike the first. Thirty-one will hit. Plus, the, plus an extra for bless. So, uh, so that's eleven points of piercing damage. Strike the second. Fourteen will miss your rapier, kind of point miss out the stone side. Okay, that's my turn. All right, ratio. I am going to cast. I think I'm going to do electric arc. Um, electric arc. Ground type that are immune to electricity. <laughs> Uh, makes its reflex save, uh, does succeed. So we'll take eight whole points of electricity damage. Seems to take it. Whatever kind of magical force animating the statue seems to be affected by electricity. And I will sustain protective ward to get it to 20 feet. And that is my turn. All right. Uh, Oarsh is now comfortably on the wall in the protective barrier. Uh, we'll go lashing out with the claw, raking against it. No, no special things, just kind of claw, claw, claw. Uh, first claw is a crit. Um, <laughs> so sees the electricity kind of arc and split open a piece in the rock and just buries the claws down deep into it, trying to feel for whatever internal mechanisms might be going for it. So... Uh, 15 double to 30 points of slashing damage. Just digging down deep into it. Ripping out uh, the creature riling in pain. Uh, the creature... Um, yeah. Does this. Um... So, as the claw strikes into the stone creature, it withdraws. When it does, you see the creature uh, crumble, like bits and pieces of the stone just come dis like falling off of one another. But as they do so, they hit the ground, they hit the stonework of the floor, and then melt through the floor. And you see it just kind of crumble down. Uh, oh, Arsh just right, we did it. there on the room. He's like, Are, do we do it? <laughs> kind of wary. Uh, we'll use the last two actions to ready an attack <laughs> just in case something else comes back up. Uh, Marion. Uh, I will do the same thing. I will ready an attack and I will um, cast shield. Okay. Uh, 
is the spiritual weapon sustain. Oh shit, it is. And Blastel's around. It's not sustain. Uh, yeah. Um, well, huh, this is a pickle. I think you should sustain them both. Can you sustain them both? You wouldn't be able to ready in that case. You can, you can shield and sustain the spiritual weapon, but then you don't have one action left. Right. Uh, yeah. I will shield and sustain the spiritual weapon. And, you know what? Forget the, uh, Forget the shield. I will sustain and I will ready an action to attack. Okay. Alright. Arrow spins around, kind of like a compass needle looking for where it might pop up next. Uh, Faith? Um, if the monster was here and I was in this square, would I be flanking with Arashik? Uh, not quite. White. No, I, I have to be standing in in the darkness. In the like, wall. In, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's probably not an option. Yeah. If Arshisk was here, like one square uh, north of his current position, then you could flank across there, assuming that the yes. monster re reappears in the same spot. I mean, they always do, right? Always. Uh, I'm gonna battle medicine myself. succeed so I gain 31 hit points so I'm almost full uh, I'm gonna take us I'm gonna step forward and then I'm gonna ready an action to punch it if it shows up I'm gonna ready an action wait is it two actions to ready something so I don't have enough actions to do that um I guess I'll battle Mezen Fabian. Should sure, not be racing these can. things, but there you go. I'm starting right next to you, aren't I? I'm blurred. Oh. Does that affect anything? Oh, yeah, that that does. Okay. I will battle Mezen something. DC 5. You can do DC 5, Jack, surely. <laughs> 7. <laughs> ah! Ah, you do it. Good, good, good. You reach through the shifting Fabians and find the real one to heal. That was Excellent. a critical success. Thank you very much. The, the 38. Hey. The fact that I'm I fatigued. Really, and... I, I really should start doing the, the DC the DC higher ones of those. Um, I can't cure, cure your fatigue. I don't think I have any way of curing fatigue, but anyways, I'm going with the action. Alright, I'm um, Faith. Clumsy. It's lovely. Okay. So, uh, clumsy is the worst. Uh, as you reach out and heal Fabian, uh, and you feel a little bit better on your feet, suddenly you are kicked back a little bit as this creature <clears throat> burrows up from the ground once more. Uh, Oarshisk and Marion can take their ready to tax as it comes bursting forward. Uh, ooh, not so great though. So Oarshisk unfortunately is able to just kind of break against the stone. Marion, you had a ready to tax as well. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah! 31 to hit. Definitely will do so. The ghostly arrow goes and pierces this creature in the side and the flank as it comes burrowing up from the ground. Uh, taking 11 points of damage. Uh, looking a little hard at this point. Um, it takes the arrow in one side and goes with his big stone fist to whack backhand you in retaliation, Marion. Uh, that is a critical hit against Ooh. Tyrion. Yeah. Hit okay. me with your best shot. Okay. Uh, that's 32 points of bludgeoning damage, and you go slamming it back against the wall. Bam! 
Uh, and, uh, let's see, we'll do that, and we've got one more action, we can, uh, go after a wash, just get kind of in there in, the, in its face. So the fist against a wash disc, but that will miss, uh, critically, no, not miss critically. Uh, so then we are on to Fabian. Okay. Spikes well, form all around you. Here it is. Uh, let's try to deception it. Uh, if you if you come to right in front of me, you'd be flanking it with a warshisk. Oh, but will I take damage for walking around? Is there thing? are stone spikes all around ah. at this point? Ah. Yes, I think I'll just try from here. So first, I'll try to. Uh, uh, what's the term? Uh, deceive it, <laughs> faint it. Yeah, faint it. Yeah, there Thank you. you. Uh, First, I'll try to faint it, but I think not. not. It, it's it kind of turns the big eye that was its back kind of toward you, and it looks like looks like it's still looking at you even with its back turned. Okay. Um. Well, then I will try to move to where I can flank it. Just over here. Right, I'll just well, take the it's, damage, it's I guess. All difficult terrain wait, all the way. Yeah, wait. So it'd be 30 say, feet to get there. there. I don't think I can, so I'm just going to attack it from here, actually. So strike the first. And strike the second. Probably not very effective. Oh no! Rapier <laughs> makes pitiful sounds against the stone flesh. Ratio. Oh, uh, that's my turn. Just electric arc it. I like. I have to roll a twenty to credit with Ray of Froth. So I'll do. I'll do electric arc. Not great damage. Alrighty. Another reflex save on its part. I uh, will succeed. Five whole points of damage. Pew. And electric arc to 25, or electric arc, um, protective ward to 25 feet. So big. Uh, oh, Arshus back up next. Um, still swinging from the, the tapestry. Uh, I was like, you better not do this again, asshole. <laughs> and goes to claw once more. Um,. It's a 28, which will be enough for a regular hit. 12 points of slashing damage. Slashes at this creature. Does seem to be bloodied at this point. Uh, and we'll just continue on Marshak's merry way. That will miss. And the third one, that will also miss. So, <laughs> not too many Wolverine claws this time. Marion. I'm going to sustain. Right. That sustain my spiritual weapon. Boy, that's a really bad damage roll. Yeah. Oh, that's the 2d8? Yeah. Yeah, no, one's on each. Minimum damage. Oh, Snake eyes. Oh, that's rough. Six whole points of damage there. Just kind of boink. Uh, like in its shoulder. I'm going to try and glare them down. All right. A 23. Against this will DC? Against this will DC. Seems unshaken, unfazed by your stern look. Right, so either I rolled poorly, which, you know, never happens, or it's mindless. I don't know which that could be. <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> uh, but does seem, well, it seems to be moving about and like looking and seeing where it's going. There's probably a certain intelligence to this creature. Uh, for my last... Turn. I'm, or for my last action, I'm going to touch and heal myself with vital beacon. Not bad. Uh, all right, you restore some of your own vitality uh, with all this. So that was Marion's go, Faith. 
So are, are there spikes everywhere? Uh, all around it, yeah. Like a five foot radius around it. So, like, not here, but the, but they are here. I mean, could, 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 I, could I have a... Uh... All these squares. Okay. I'm gonna go... to here. And then I want to cut this corner here. And then go to here. So I know I'm stepping in this one that I spiked, this one that I spiked, but I'm trying to not step in this one that I spiked. Sure, I'll give you that. So there's two, uh, they're difficult terrain as well. So the... Uh, surprisingly, I have enough movement to do it. Oh yeah, you're a monk, so don't worry <laughs> about that part. But uh, they do shoot up and these spikes pierce into you as you go along. So you will be taking... Uh, 17 points of piercing damage. Ow. I'm like, it can't be that much. <laughs> okay, that was one action. Yep. I'm gonna try another key strike. You are now flanking with the Warshes. Now flanking. And I'm still blessed? Uh, yeah, you're because Marion extended the range, so you're. Put a one in there blessed. for the bless. So 25. Because it is flat footed, a 25 will hit. Just nice. barely. Uh, for 26 points of damage, you take the moment as it's trying to strike out and punch Oarsisk off the tapestry to come around behind it and BAM! Another impactful, quaking fist of 26 damage into its side. I'll try again. 19 will miss, however. It wises up and takes a step back uh, and turns to look at you. Uh, it's crumbling, though. You see parts of it just are Reactions. coming to the floor and not sinking into the earth. Haha! -ha. That one hits though. 26 will hit as well. For maximum damage. 17 more points of damage is looking rough. And that last attack. Well, uh, oh yeah, it was flurry of move, flurry of blows, punch, punch. Yeah. Uh, the last punch was miss, unfortunately. I uh, destined a fort save for the first punch, yeah? Yes. Okay. Uh, gets a 36. Yeah, you yeah. know. Rocks. I don't, I don't think you can possibly fail that, but it does have to, it does have to roll. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, yeah, it's not happy about that, Faith. Uh, it's going to go turn around, wheel on you, and just try to slam you into the ground. Uh, big, meaty fist. Uh, 36 to hit you, Faith. Because we're eighth level, it's not a critical hit. My AC is now 27. Yeah, nice. Just <laughs> and I'm giving it. you a plus one. Oh, oh yeah, AC, right, 28. Yeah, yes, sorry. Remember the giant purple. <laughs> the big purple aura. Uh, so that is a 16 points of bludgeoning damage. And he does knock you back over that way. Uh, um, and he's just really mad you hit him so much. So he's going to follow up that punch faith with a rock. It's going to just like conjure up stone, rip it out of the ground, and throw it at you, Faith. How dare you punch me so hard. Uh, so the rock is going to be only a 23 day at you, so I don't That will miss. Aha! Uh -huh. um, so probably just last punch at Awarshus again. Be a miss, not do it. Fabian, on to you. Okay, well, let's try a faint it again. This time, I'm, maybe I will be six more successful. It's a little bit better. Five versus its perception DC, right? Yep. Uh, 25 is not quite enough. Almost there, but oh, it does still be able to track your movements as you try to dart around it. I was only not fatigued. Uh, strike the first. But you like uh, ah, <laughs> get in there and deal a nasty hit to some of the crumbling stone bits. Now your rapier does find purchase. So that's fourteen plus your deadly D eight on top of that. Uh, 
that, so that'll be and 18 points of damage total. Strike it one more time. Because you never know. 14 will miss, unfortunately. But it's <laughs> and that's, okay. barely Man, holding itself cool. together at this point. It's crumbling severely. Horatio? Um, yeah, I think I'm going to be uncreative here. <laughs> I'm going to electric arc it. All reliable. Maybe one day it'll fail a reflex save. That's not this day. It succeeds. <laughs> Bad. Uh, yep. So Our rock's so fast. It's rock <laughs> real uh, fast. Well, most of it's not there anymore. It's it's like a skeleton frame of the statue it once was. And then protective ward to 30 feet. Okay. Oarshus goes and does just like a full leap off the tapestry, dive wolverine style into the stone mauler. Uh, goes with the claw. And... Misses! Second claw. Misses! Third claw. Critically misses. Come on, Oarshus. Oarshus kind of stumbles. is like, Ugh. Marion. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot. Ghost arrow misses. And shoot. The other ghost arrow misses. And uh, why not? Okay. <laughs> There's so much of it gone that these attacks are just... If it had more of its body left, it would be hitting it, but it's just streaking past. Uh, Faith? Uh, I'm gonna step back. Alright, you step Take into more the damage. thing again. Uh, for eight points of piercing damage. I'm just going to do a regular flurry of blows. Because I'm running low on key points. A 29 will finally be sufficient <laughs> for you to come up and another quaking, vibrating punch. Punch into it. The stone eye crumbles inward. The entirety of the statue <laughs> crumbling down into nothing. Destroyed. Hey, we did it! Yay! Good job. And for this great achievement, you all get 60 experience points. <laughs> I bet we, 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 that was a low encounter, guys. <laughs> It was a lot harder the first time we fought. It was it. only a moderate when it beat our ass and we ran away. <laughs> I, I mean, th that's because we were like completely out of. Yeah, that's true. We were everything. we were out of everything, <laughs> and did not roll well left, I don't think. Okay, now we can leave. <laughs> All right, now I like this plan. All right. Um, how are we gonna get out? Do we want to? investigate the room it was in one more time before we leave oh yeah let's search the room oh yeah that's a good idea we'll search the room yeah uh sure so uh besides where you know these secret doors to be off to the left and right past these tapestries uh you kind of well i don't know if you knew about the one on the left but similar to the way you kind of came in here with the secret door there's another one that mirrors over here uh that goes off to that way kind of judging from where you were uh, it looks to lead toward that chamber where the sarcophagi were, where, um, uh, you know, all the, the sleeping Triceratops still is, presumably. Um, other than that, uh, there is an altar with a bunch of melted candles on it. The rest of this rug and the tapestries were pretty nice. Um, you also see that there are four torches that have not been extinguished, have not gone out still burn brightly in the four corners of this room. I detect magic. You detect magic upon these torches. All right. Uh, I can only assume that they are ever burning torches. After a moment of investigating, indeed, you do find that four in the corners seem to be Those things. ever burning torches. Those things are worth money. Yes. Not a lot of money, uh, but some. 
These are scented with sweet smelling incense. So they're ever bring torches that smell nice. I will take one for personal use. All right, you have one personal ever burning torch <laughs> incense. It is lighter. going in my wagon. <laughs> yep, yeah, like oh, this is pretty nice. That's a really good idea. Maybe we shouldn't sell them. Maybe we should keep them <laughs> for our own use. You know, after I will put pretty stinky and sweaty, and just be nice to just kind of go back to your wagon and have some nice ever burning torch. I will put three of them in the bag of holding. Alrighty. So, uh, so far in this lower level, you just have that staircase that you know to go back up, um, and then you have the tunnel that leads presumably to the Darklands. And these are the only two exits you have seen from this level. I vote we don't go to the Darklands. That sounds like a bad idea to do that, yeah. All right. So... Uh, you all, and I will once more fast travel you to the location to save a little hassle. Whoop. Uh, you go to these stairs and start to head up carefully. Yes, does it. Uh, I will go in first because I am wearing my Aerodonite robes. Oh, wait, I'm going to heal myself first. Sure, you can definitely do heals. I think your haste and uh, blur have worn out for this point. So yeah, the they're minute, only so. a minute. Yep. Yeah, we should all put on Arid and Road. I think I also have some on too. Don't we? Didn't we all I grab? I mean, yeah. I guess I've I've taken my purple I, 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 robe I, I, off. I'll set my robe from the other back. place. Let's see. I got, got a lot of choices for robes. I guess I go with Arid and robes. Because <laughs> we had we had the ro the gray robe from the the other temple. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gazra, the Gazran Temple, the Herm Hermitage of Blessed Lightning. Uh, so, as you don these robes, you open up these double doors at the top of the stairs to find a statue, or rather the butt of a statue of Aridin, that does not move, does not animate whatsoever, and lets you pass uneventfully, unlike the last time you saw it. I gesture at it rudely yeah, as we pass. <laughs> One of you, one brother pretends to be a, a, a humble air tonight priest, as the other one just flicks off the statue. Uh, you go uh, and to make short work of it, um, you come back through. The upper level seems relatively undisturbed where you left it a couple days ago. Uh, there is a couple exits from the upper level that you know of. Uh, there is the way you came in, which is this long staircase kind of to the front of the temple that you had the guards had to let you down like a secret entrance by a, a dried up stat or dried up fountain on the surface. Uh, or there is that uh, bell tower that's been buried in into the basement level of this old pottery shop where you found a drug addicted halfling uh, earlier. It's kind of the two exits that you know of. I say we leave through the pottery barn. That seems more subtle. Less of yeah, a we, chance to run into those guards that we flummoxed on the way in. Oh, yeah, I forgot about them. Yeah, I, I, I vote for the pottery. The pottery. Yeah, that, that's barn. right. They were they were they were weird about things, even though we have permission to be here. <laughs> Let's go the other way. Alrighty. You go up through the bell tower into the basement, eventually up to the surface, into this old abandoned pottery shop. You see as you come through, through the broken windows, a little across the street, there's a few people who seem to be kind of hunched in a little corner, one of them looking around, and they kind of notice you for a sec, but then kind of walk away slowly, way down the street. No one else seems to bother you as you come out to a nice, um, if crisp, uh, daylight, maybe a little bit before noon is what you would guess. I uh, kind of lost track of time a little bit down there in the depths in the dungeon, but once more feeling uh, cool uh, daylight upon your skin feels a little bit nice after all that time underground. Um, but you are back out in the mean streets of Escadar. What do you do? 
Anybody want to get lunch? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I will buy, since, well, I'm the reason that you're in this mess, apparently. Lunch. Then I think we all should probably, like, go bathe. I mean, I know I've got my magic, and magic is great. <laughs> we we got these torches. So we can just soaking in hot water, you can't beat it. <laughs> Marion gives himself a sniff. Right. Maybe we should bathe first. Yeah, you're pretty stinky. <laughs> All right, bathe first, then lunch. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Where do you go to bathe? I mean, should we go back to our our people? Yeah, <laughs> our we game? probably yeah. I know we're, we've been gone for three days. I'm sure they're yeah. worried about us. Yeah, right. They are. Hopefully, they're at, worried about us. At this point, they must be used to it. Although, I think we've, this this is the longest we this is the longest we've been. Yeah. Gone. Yeah, it's been a couple days, so. Uh, tired and stinky, uh, you go and head back toward the Circus of Wayward Wonders uh, to your little plot that you cleared out earlier for the constable and allowed you to have your first performance in Escadar. Uh, it's a little bit on the outskirts of town, uh, so it takes a, a few minutes to get out there, but it's not a, it's an uneventful journey. When you get there, uh, you go and you see... It's the big top set up there. You look, and you can't help but see along one side this blackened scar along the fabric, as if a portion of the tent were burned. You see a few of the roustabouts around. Some of them with bandaged arms. You know, one of them kind of laying down, tending over. And you see, uh, kind of all gathered together uh, around Eliza, who seems to be crying. The professor notes you approaching. Looks to you and, and looks down, looks back up. Sees you staring about at all hap what, what's happened and transpired here while you've been gone. And he says, uh, A half dozen people came with torches and clubs. We were rehearsing, so we were too scattered to make a good defense. They wore masks, but plenty of us recognized them anyway. Ruffians from the Celestial Menagerie. They didn't kill anyone, thank the stars, but a few of our performers are going to need weeks to recover. And some of the animals died in the fire. But we've put everything out. The message was clear. We've been told to get out of Eskadar, expect something worse. Mistress Dust Light is behind this, and all of us know it. Bastards. An attack like this goes too far. She's got to answer for what she's done, either within the law or outside of it. And resolved with this grim purpose, vengeance bubbling within you, feeling the hate, the animosity, and all the crimes and willing to bring her to justice will hold that animosity until next time on Really Playing Games. The Extinction Guy. <laughs>